Well now, after that, I think it's pretty obvious what this video is about. We're going to finish that house sign number we started in the live stream, and well, I installed it on my house. So let's take a quick look at, well, how I did that. So if you didn't see the live stream or the cut up live stream version video of how we basically retrofitted this house number with addressable LEDs, I'll have those both linked in the video description. So go there to find out basically how we made the number itself and the addressable LEDs. It's uh, controlled using a Queen LED Dig Uno module and I opted to use a external antenna version because it's right behind a big metal box. And well, that's worked well so far. But going back, if we go to where we left it off during those live streams and building it together, the first thing I did was add some hot glue around the opening where the cables came from and made a little, you know, squirted it all in there to kind of make it watertight. It's not going to hang anywhere where water should come, even when it rains heavily, but you can't seal it up too much, I think. Well, then the next part was actually putting it on the wall. Now, this was a little bit more involved than I hoped it would be. It came with these little plastic pe pegs, which are supposed to like grip into the wall. As you can see here, I removed our old house number and I tried one of the pegs in the existing hole and it seemed to work. So I started to drill uh, the hole for the other peg. And then of course I needed a big hole to run the cables. Now here in the Netherlands, we have a brick outer wall and then we have an inner, uh, an air gap basically. And then we have insulation and then we have a stone or brick inner wall. I have this giant drill. <laughs> which I used to drill through all of those layers uh, to end up inside. Once that was done, I used a little piece of PVC pipe, which I then squeezed and hammered into the hole to give it a clear path uh, from inside to outside. Uh, that's just how general electric stuff is done here in the Netherlands. I don't know if you if you live in the US, it might be very different, uh, but after that was done, we had a clear pipe in which we could feed through the cables and I managed to miss the uh, guiding rails of the garage door by just a few millimeters. So, well, I guess that worked out. Um, so we had the pipe in there and I fed through the cables. I put on the little screw um, peg, peg standoff thingies and I pushed it into the wall. And well, you can figure out by now, yeah, uh, that wasn't going to stay put at all. As soon as I could, it, it just fell off, fell off of the wall, even if the wind was blowing. So after debating and, uh, you know, discussing with my girlfriend a little bit, she is actually very knowledgeable in kit because she's a chemist and she's made formulas for kit and stuff before. We decided to kit it up. So first... Our kit gun broke, so I had to borrow one from a neighbor. Uh, but in the end, we squirted some kit into the holes, and then we pushed the sign into there, all the while while feeding those cables back through the uh, the cable hole and the PVC pipe that was in there. And that all aligned perfectly, and from the outside, you basically can't see anything of the mounting anymore. Uh, so now we had the cables inside. I did a quick little test with a portable board and a power bank and that still all worked fine. So I moved on and I, um, well, I needed to lengthen the wires because the, the spot I wanted to put the controller was a little bit further away. So I got some 18 gauge um, wire, just, you know, the, the, the standard uh, two wire power stuff. And I got a 22 gauge or 24 gauge, I don't actually remember, um, to go with that for a data wire. Now, there's going to be more content coming up versus using two wires for power and then a separate data wire. 
or using a three wire cable because as it turns out, that actually changes some things. But this video isn't about that. So I lengthened the cable and I used some of these, uh, these Wago clips, as you, well, you'll probably see in the photos, which make it very easy to input three cables as it has three positions and then basically do it again on the other side and they make for a very good connection and I basically use them in a lot of installs. So then I connected my spools of cables. I ran it all across the ceiling to where I wanted to have the controller. And I like using some of these wire clips. I bought a whole bunch of them. So I have a big box of them in all kinds of different sizes. But when doing any kind of projects, if you want your cables to look slightly neat in a very quick fashion, and I know it's not running, running straight over the wall, but uh, these are very easy to use and generally they stick pretty well actually. So I, uh, I chose a spot for the controller. I cut off my extra end of cables. Of course, I put wire ferrules on it to make sure I always have a good connection, especially in screw terminals and stuff like that. Uh, you you kind of want to use wire ferrules to uh, finish off your cables, uh, making sure you have a secure connection. Then I went to uh, choose a power supply and I had a nice five volt, six amp brick. And I believe from what we measured during the live streams, the maximum it uses at full bright white is about five amps or 25 watts, something like that. So a six amp power supply is a very good fit. Um, I do always snip off the, um, the barrel jack they come with. Barrel jacks aren't really useful beyond three to maybe five amps. So I just snip those off and then I put wire ferrules on those cables again. So I again can screw them into my Queen LED Dig Uno and have a secure connection. Now for that Queen LED Dig Uno, uh, as I said, I was using a AE variant, so antenna external. And I have a little case, which I 3D printed. And uh, this is designed by, I believe, someone from the WLED Discord. I'm really bad with names, but it'll be flashing here on my chest right now. So I'll have that linked in the description. And it's specifically a case which has a hole for the antenna to go. So it's a little bit of a squeeze to get it in there. But in the end, that fit perfectly. All the wires were neatly screwed in. and. You can run the board without a case. I mean, uh, like here on my back wall, I just have a bare board. But, you know, if, if you have a 3D printer making or printing a little case, or if you don't have a 3D printer using a prefab uh, project box or something like that, you know, it hides away the controller a little bit. Um, so I got some double-sided sticky tape for both the power supply and uh, the Queen LED Dig Uno. I put it in its case, as I said, and then I just stuck it to the wall. And since this stuff isn't heavy at all, that has stayed up for the last week perfectly. And then I turned it on. And well, you saw a little bit already at the beginning of the video, but the results are awesome. Let's have another look. Doesn't that look amazing? I think it looks amazing. It immediately got the girlfriend approval seal. She loved it and she actually played around with some patterns and stuff like that. And the uh, level of light that it's emitting is actually a lot better than I was expecting. Now we're using WS2812C-220 uh, uh, LEDs. So they're tiny 220 LEDs instead of 5050 LEDs and there is 198 LEDs a meter. Now, this was a strip I had for testing, and it turns out it was actually a custom production. 
but I've talked to the guys and uh, we should have at the moment of this video, this exact strip listed in the web shop at Allnet. So if you happen to be in, uh, buying a controller, you can also add two meters of this strip. Now, this is a very new chip. So the 20, uh, 20, WS2812C and then the 2020 variant. And as I said, there's 198 LEDs per meter. That makes it kind of expensive. It's not like the ultimate 332 LEDs per meter strip expensive, but for about two meters, you pay 60 bucks. And well, that's the best price I can do right now because it's really a custom product. But as you saw in the video, it's very narrow and having that much, uh, that many LEDs close together with low power usage, it really produced a good result. It's much brighter than I thought it would be. And well, the effect it gives on the wall and how it spreads out and when the effects move and such, it's just awesome. Now, while this is an awesome project and I'll have everything linked in the description and those are affiliate links. So help me out doing these kind of projects. This is not a cheap project. I mean, the letter alone costs about 40 bucks. Then you need like a $10 power supply. Then you need a Quinn LED dig Uno with an external antenna. So that's like, I don't know, 30 bucks or something like that. And then you need the LED strip. And well, I used a little bit less than one meter on this sin single digit. Uh, so that's like 30 bucks, but you have to buy two meters, but you know, so this is easily a hundred dollar plus project. Uh, the results awesome. But money-wise, it's a bit difficult to explain unless you just love doing this kind of stuff, love doing projects, and want, well, exactly what it turned into. Um, and, well, I, yeah, another project done. It's running WLED, of course, so there's lots of effects. Oh, and I linked it into a home assistant. So now when I push the doorbell button, this happens. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? My doorbell is in Home Assistant. If you didn't catch that, you know, watch the video. Uh, and now my house number sign is also in Home Assistant. So if anyone pushes the button, it can totally freak out and scare all the postmen. Because even during the day, this is very visible. Well, uh, I'd say project done and very successful. Uh, I... I took the extra time to neatly work it away in our garage so the wires are out of the way it doesn't interrupt if the rolling door and it's neat, neatly attached to the wall and so far it's been perfectly stable and working well and you know so uh, let me know in the comments what you think i think it's one of my better uh, succeeded projects uh, up there with the heart light we we made a while back and uh yeah thank you for watching Thank you for using affiliate links if you do, or getting a controller and stuff like that. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.